This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at FBHP.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and we're glad to have you join us for the schedule release edition of the OTP. Woo you may have seen the schedule by now. You probably have, but... We're going to break it down in some different ways as we like to go deeper on scheduled release day. Amy Wells, three, four overall thoughts on the Titans 2024 schedule. Well, Mike, the OT people know that my first thing I look for is the bye week. <laughs> because A, I like to take a nap, but B, you kind of see where your schedule is going to be broken up. Right. So... When I look at this, the Titans have a bye week in week five. And what that says to me is that they are going to have 13 games in a row on the backside of that bye week. Um, that's a long stretch of games to be playing. That's right. a lot of football. So that's the first thing I noticed. The second thing that I noticed is there's no Thursday night game on this schedule. And so what that means is there's no short weeks for the Tennessee Titans this season. Um, there is kind of a longer week with the Titans playing on Monday night football in week four. Um, but there's no quick turnaround weeks where you play on a Sunday and you've got to get on an airplane on a Wednesday or, you know, even playing on a Thursday. It just makes a week really sure. challenging. There aren't any of those for the Tennessee Titans this year, which is really great. Um, the time of year that really stands out to me is December. The Titans are playing four division games in the month of December. That's a lot. Three to close out the season. Your bread is buttered in the month of December for the Tennessee Titans. Um, and with that being at the end of the season, on the back end of nine games in a row is when that stretch kind of begins. That's hard work. That's a heavy lift. It is indeed a heavy lift. Let's take a look at the schedule in depth. Preseason home games with San Francisco and Seattle, so you don't have to go to the West Coast in the preseason, which is a dream. Ending the preseason at New Orleans, about as good a preseason road game as the Tennessee Titans could ask for. September 8th at Chicago, first time that the Titans have ever opened a season against the Bears. Only the 14th overall meeting, as a matter of fact. The last time the Titans were at Soldier Field for a regular season game in 2016, Titans won that game, but the Bears were able to execute a successful onside kick, the last opponent against the Titans to do that. So it's been nearly eight years since that happened. Week two, the Jets in Nashville for the first time since 2018. Of course, Played him a couple years ago at the Meadowlands, and Zach Wilson was able to beat the Titans oh, yes. in overtime. But in 2018, the Titans won the game at Nissan Stadium. Aaron Rodgers in week two. Speaking of Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay Packers, his former team, come to Nissan Stadium for the first time in eight years. Last time they were here, Titans won that game 47-25. to And then the only primetime game in week four, Monday Night Football at Miami, a rematch of the December 11th thriller from 2023, the Titans and the Dolphins once again. Week five, the bye. Coming off the bye, a division game. Your first against the Indianapolis Colts at Nissan Stadium. Titans lost a heartbreaker in overtime to the Colts a year ago in Nashville. October 20th at Buffalo for the first time since 2022. And October 27th at Detroit for the first time since September of 2016. A historic play for the Titans, a fourth down play to win it. Marcus Mariota completing the game-winning touchdown pass to... Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson, that's exactly right. Go to the month of November, November 3rd. New England comes to town for the first time in six years. Titans back on the road for their only non-noon start on a Sunday as they play the Los Angeles Chargers at 305. 
Tennessee played there two years ago. You may remember Ryan Tannehill sustained an ankle injury in that game, kept playing through the contest and gave the Titans a chance. But that was a tough one and will be a tough one again on November the 10th. Back home for Minnesota on November 17th and then to Houston on November the 24th. December. The run starts December 1st at Washington. Then it's home for Jacksonville, and that's a rematch of the 2023 finale, which the Titans won 28-20 to knock the Jaguars out of the playoffs. It's always fun when these two teams get together. December 15th, fifth meeting since 2020 between the Titans and the Bengals. Two teams played in week four a year ago. Titans won that one convincingly. Of course, the new head coach, Brian Callahan, formerly coached in Cincinnati for Zach Taylor and staff. And so there's a little bit of intrigue in that one. December the 22nd at Indianapolis. You know what it's like when the Titans go to Lucas Oil Stadium. It's always a battle. To Jacksonville on December the 29th. And then January 5th, the season closes with Houston coming to Nissan Stadium. Another team that the Titans lost to in overtime at home a year ago. They'll be looking for revenge in this particular contest. And the Texans and the Titans close out the 2024 regular season. Remind you, too, in case you're wondering, the Super Bowl, which is 59, mm. February 9th, 2025, in New Orleans. Love a New Orleans Super Bowl. So January 5th, the regular season ends. January 12th, the playoffs begin. The Super Bowl is February 9th in New Orleans, and that is Super Bowl 59. Well, if the Titans' first road game and last road game could be in New Orleans, that would be very poetic. Would it, though? Wouldn't that be nice? That would be great. All <laughs> right. So we've always taken the season in quarters. And now that the NFL plays a 17-game schedule, there's no way to really take it in quarters. It messes but up our math. It, it does, but every coach in the league still does this. <laughs> Mathematically, it's incorrect, but we are following along with the trend. So let's take a look at the Titans season in quarters at Chicago, Jets, Green Bay, at Miami, and the bye. That's what makes up the first quarter of the Titans schedule. Second quarter, Indianapolis, at Buffalo, at Detroit, New England. Third quarter, at LA Chargers, Minnesota, at Houston, at Washington. Fourth quarter, Jacksonville, Cincinnati, at Indianapolis, at Jacksonville, Houston at home. Amy Wells, toughest quarter, most interesting quarter, quarter that jumps out to you, even though it's not really a quarter. Yeah, so the most interesting non-quarter to me is that last one, that fourth quarter. Um, all of those division games in there, this is where the Tennessee Titans season is really going to be made. This is where, I mean, we know that division games mean a little bit more, not only as it relates to whether you win or lose the division, but this is where some of your toughest competition could conceivably be as well. So there's a lot of things to watch in that December quarter, that final quarter of this season, um, that I think are going to have a major impact on what the Titans are able to do in the postseason. For me, it's the third quarter. Okay at the LA Chargers, home for Minnesota, at Houston, at Washington. You can't go 0 for 4 right there. With three road games that figure to all be tough, you've got to come out of there with one or two wins so that you can get to the fourth quarter that you're talking about and still be in it. You could easily make the case for the first quarter, but that would be too easy for the OT people. We don't want to do that. Yeah, but that was my second choice. But you're in a position, I mean, you're playing Chicago in the season opener, Caleb Williams' first start, so rookie quarterback, and you don't know what the Bears are going to do, but you don't have any idea what the Titans are going to do if you're the Bears because – everything's new right they can spring offense defense special teams on them that day then two home games both against teams that are probably going to be said to be better than you are if you're the titans but you're at home so they're winnable and then you go to miami where you scored a win a year ago with less talent than you figure to take into the game on September 30th. We know all bets are off when you go to Miami. Sure. The Titans always have wild games in Miami. So I think that one's exciting. And 
that's your primetime game. So there's a little extra juice going into that game as well. And then you've got to buy on the back end to kind of really evaluate what you've done in that first quarter, make some adjustments, relax, refresh, and then hit it hard for the rest of the season. I like the buy headed into the Indianapolis game. Yeah. That's always advantageous going into a division game. Let's take a look now at the AFC South and the six games there. The aforementioned October 13th game with Indianapolis in Nashville. And then right around Thanksgiving at Houston. And then down the stretch, four of your last five. Jacksonville at Indianapolis at Jacksonville, Houston. So five of the Titans' last seven games total against division opponents. Heavy lifting. Heavy lifting for sure, but what an opportunity too. It feels like going into that part of the season, you have a really clear idea of where you stand within the games you've won and the games you've lost, obviously going into the last part of the season, but you also have a really good idea of who your opponents are. So it feels like you're going into the games that matter the most with the most amount of information about who your team is, who your players are, what you're good at, what you're not as good at, and what you need to accomplish in the home stretch. It feels like for a new coaching staff, for a team that has a ton of new players, when all of your games that are the most important games, arguably, are at the end of the season, you're going in with the most amount of information and knowledge about your team as you can get, which seems in my mind to be really advantageous for this team. So my thoughts on the schedule just overall, I don't see any landmines. Mm -mm. There are no situations where you have three road games in a row. There's, I mean, there seems to be nothing impossible. Uh, no short weeks, as you said. One primetime game on Monday Night Football, followed by the bye, which is not a bad thing at all. And just overall, it's like if you take care of your business throughout this schedule, you give yourself a chance at the end. And that's really, that's all you can ask for. There have been some schedules we've seen over the years where it's, it feels like you were just thrown into spots where they had openings because they weren't very interested in you. And I don't think that's the case, but that's how it feels. <laughs> in this case, it, it seems very fair. I don't really see how people would have many complaints with this schedule overall. Yeah, it's incredibly balanced. I love the stretch of noon games. All of them are noon games, really, minus the uh, primetime game on Monday night. 14 for sure, yeah. and the Houston game could be a 15. And so. there's always the flex options, but I, I love when the team can get in a routine, when you can just be playing in the same time slot over and over. You get that rhythm, and when things start clicking and everybody can get in a rhythm, it feels really good, and it just it makes the season a little bit easier because you can get into a flow. Well, I also like a lot of people don't look at the preseason schedule. I like for our fan base that Seattle and San Francisco are coming in here, San yep. Francisco first and then Seattle. Two good teams to, to watch in the preseason. And the Titans will probably do more in the preseason than they have done in years past with a new coaching staff. So that's good for fans who are going to buy tickets and come to Nissan Stadium. Um, also good that we don't have to go to the West Coast in the preseason right. because preseason games are night games. Yeah. Even if they start at like 6 o'clock local time, yeah. uh, that would put us back – at four in the morning, four in five the morning, in the morning. And having to go to work the next day, not fabulous. Can so. I give you the sideline reporter's review of this schedule? Sure. Phenomenal. <laughs> if you are a sideline reporter, this is your dream. So Ramon Foster is going to be happy. Ramon Foster, my friend. Oh, this is just delightful. The, the only one that looks like it could be marginally chilly is at Washington, December 1st. That'll be a chilly game. Well, and Wear the, a heavy sweater, you'll be fine. And the last three games at home could be chilly. They could be chilly. Well, and but Nashville chilly is not the same as some of the other chilies. Kansas I mean, City chilly. Yeah, it can get cold here, and you got to bundle up. But, I mean, to be going to Buffalo in October, are you kidding me? Detroit is inside, but, I mean, that'll still be lovely the night before. Go get something to eat. L.A. is always great. Uh, Washington will be a little chilly. Jacksonville, it won't be stifling hot. Chicago will be lovely. Ugh. If you want to travel, this is the year to travel the game. Ah, uh, I will take issue with that. Why? 
because I was looking ahead to the 2025 opponents. Oh, okay. So you've got your AFC South opponents, the Houston Indy Jacksonville. Of course. Arizona. Ooh. Denver. Ooh. Las Vegas. Okay. San Francisco. And then the AFC North will be determined by the team that finishes with the like position in the division as the Titans do in the AFC South. So, again, Houston, Indianapolis, Jacksonville, Arizona, Denver, Las Vegas, San Francisco, and an AFC North team. Those are the road trips next year. The home schedule. Okay. All right. AFC South opponents. Of course. Kansas City. Okay. L.A. Chargers. L.A. Rams, mm -hmm. Seattle, a team from the AFC East that finishes in their like position as the Titans, okay. and a team from the NFC South that finishes in a like position. Oh. So, you know, this year's schedule is really good. The home schedule is really good. Yeah, home schedule is strong. Well, so you've got the, the home schedule this year, Jets and Green Bay in September, Indianapolis in October, on October the 13th. New England on November 3rd, and Minnesota on November 17th. Jacksonville and Cincinnati on December 8th and 15th, and then Houston on January the 5th. So, I mean, it's a, it's a really good home schedule for not only opponents, but also dates. I mean, yeah. to, to know you're gonna get to see Aaron Rodgers to know you're going to get to see some of the new coaches and the new teams. And I mean, it's just, it's going to be interesting. Cincinnati is always a great home game. And oh, of course. Cincinnati fans try to get into Nissan Stadium. They're a little, they're a little chirpy. Well, I get, I mean, we, we go there and travel we're, well too. We're a little chirpy. It's an easy drive. It's, an, it's a great drive. You get excited on the Cincinnati's way Cincinnati's a good place. It is. You know who else is great? Seat Geek. Ah, yeah. Speaking of tickets, they're the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any other live event in Nashville, Seat Geek is the place to do it. Seat Geek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So, Titans fans, Ken fan. All right, you are the travel expert. I, or, or I don't know if I'm an expert. Or but... so you claim. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. let's go through some of these cities to which the Titans are traveling. And we know a lot of the OT people and Titans fans in general like to make one or more road games per year. Mm -hmm. So let's go through these a little bit and you can throw out some of Amy's travel tips. Okay, right. I don't know if I have many, but All right, here yeah, we go. let's do it. September 8th at Chicago. Go get deep dish pizza. Or you know what else? What? Peace Pizza, oh, which is yes. where Peter Skaronsky had his draft party. Yeah, go there. Uh, they've got that. New, I didn't get to eat there I know, before. New Haven style pizza. It is. Good? Very good. All right, Mike knows good pizza, so there you go. But I love Gino's East, um, Giordano. I mean, yeah. all, I mean, I love deep dish pizza. I know. Uh, so September 30 at Miami. At Miami. We always go to the same place every time. Billy Stone Crab. It's in Hollywood, Florida, so it's a little further north, but oh, it's so good. It's a spot. It's so good. Buffalo on October 20th. Well, Buffalo, you got to get wings, I guess. So you yeah. go to Anchor Bar. That's kind of the place to go. But we also had pizza and wings at a place called Bada Bing. Bada that Bing. Was really good. So, and you could see someone famous there. Won't be O.J. Simpson Not this time. Not the same famous person, but Not you this could time. see someone famous. That was interesting. It was very exciting. Won't happen again. No. Nope. At Detroit on October the 27th. I don't know. I've never eaten in Detroit. So I got like room service the last time we were there, but Detroit style pizza is a thing. Fantastic. Yeah, people, I, yeah. I love Detroit style pizza. What, what makes it Detroit style? Sort of got a style. burnt crust. It's okay. a raised crust. It's not Chicago style with the deep dish, but it's more Cut toward that. The edges? than uh, They're squares. Uh, I don't love square pizza. I, I'm telling you, it's great. All right. All right, so go to Los Angeles on November 10th to play the Chargers. We went to a place in Los Angeles once. I guess it was more in Marina Del Rey. Coach Mack, he's the L.A. man. He took us to a place called Salt, and I saw seals for the first time ever in my life. Great. How was the food? The food was really good, too, but I saw seals. Uh, at so Houston. At Houston, we always go to Mama Nympha's, but beware, there's two of them. 
and make sure you go to the right place. That you get it. Well, they're yeah. both excellent. They're both really good, but don't make reservations at one and then drive to the other one. It's the original place for Tex-Mex. It's so, so it's good. Just, get the guacamole it's every time. Fantastic. At so Washington. Good. At Washington, there's a lot of great places to eat. I have been told by some intel that Le Diplomat is the best place to go, and it's right by the White House, and you can see everything when you eat there. There you go. Last time we were there, we ended up at Chili's. I know. You ate it at Chili's. I felt bad for you for that. I yeah, didn't. I went someplace. Someplace place. famous. Yeah. Uh, at Indianapolis on December 22nd. At Indianapolis, you've got to go to St. Elmo's. And if you but don't... do you think you can get in there around if, okay, Christmas? Okay, if you... Probably. If you can't get in, though, because we always go with Coach Mac, so I feel like we're fancy. Um, if you can't get in, though, right next door, Harry and Izzy's has mostly the same menu. They share a kitchen. Yeah, owned by the same people. There you go. Uh, at Jacksonville, December the 29th. Jacksonville's an interesting one. Wait a minute. If you tell them anywhere other than the bearded pig. I had two. I even had my fingers prepared to say two. Okay. So if you want really good barbecue... The Bearded Pig, and oh. it's, there's one downtown Jacksonville, so it's very easy to get to, and Mike Keith will probably be there. For hours. For hours. <laughs> so the, the banana pudding, too. Oh, yeah. Is phenomenal. Actually, yeah, it is pretty good. But if you want seafood, which when you go to Florida, a lot of people want seafood. Yeah, I heard that. Safe Harbor is the place to get the best seafood in Jacksonville. Bearded Pig. Out at the beach. Bearded Pig. I'm, I'm just telling you. What the people want to know. I mean, the burnt ends there. The, it's delicious. I, I mean. But I mean, you can get barbecue in Nashville. Well, bar if the barbecue leaving. is really good in Nashville. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. But, and you want to switch it up. But this is one of these places that. He, Mike Keith has been known to go multiple days in a row to the well, Bearded Pig. Well, in 2020, <laughs> during COVID, when we traveled to Jacksonville, we had to travel separate from the team party, so we stayed right by the Bearded Pig. Mm -hmm. We flew in, we went there for lunch on Saturday. We watched college football all afternoon, basically, mm -hmm. and then went back after a short break for dinner <laughs> that night. And then after we won the game, we couldn't fly back till the next morning, so that? we went back for a third time. <laughs> They've got Mike Keith's picture on the wall. No, they don't. <laughs> they they have, should. They should not. But it's a great place to watch college football. and that's It's a, a really good food. I make fun. It's really good. Those are my travel tips. They're all eating. But okay. these are my tips for you. Come watch the Titans play. Yeah, come see us. Yeah. And if we're there, swing by. Yeah, come say hi. Coach Mack will invite you to sit with us. and. I mean, yeah, you'll get the full, you the get full the, Mac. The full treatment. <laughs> all right, so let's go through the schedule one more time. Okay. And you can comment. I'll, I'll pause afterwards, and you can make a comment if you'd like to. And I sh sure would. 2024 schedule. Tennessee Titans, all times central. Preseason, San Francisco, Seattle. Dates and times, TBD. And then week three of the preseason at New Orleans. Regular season, at Chicago, noon kickoff. September 15th, New York Jets, Noon kickoff. September 22nd, Green Bay, noon kickoff. Monday Night Football at Miami, September 30th, 6.30 Central kickoff. The rematch. The rematch. A bye on October the 6th, so a week five bye into the October 13th AFC South lid lifter as the Titans will play host to the Indianapolis Colts. Awesome. Back-to-back -back road games, October 20 and 27, at Buffalo and at Detroit. We could just stay up there. They're so close. Well, we could, and perfect we could, weather. Well, if you're going to go. It's going to be so nice. Even though Detroit's inside. Yeah, but still, you got to go outside to get inside. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Let's go to November. November 3rd, a home game with the Patriots at noon. Yep. Only West Coast trip at Los Angeles Chargers, November 10th, 305. November 17th. Back home for Minnesota at noon at Houston, November 24th. And again, that's a noon kickoff. Staying with the noon theme into December at Washington, December 1st. Home for Jacksonville, December 8th. Home for Cincinnati, December 15th. Back-to-back -back road games at Indianapolis and at Jacksonville, December 22 and 29. And then... Home for the final weekend, week 18, against Houston, 
date and time TBD based on matchups and standings. So when you see this one listed as January 5th, Houston, 12 o'clock, that could change. It's a little flexible. And the Titans have never opened a season against the Chicago Bears. That's wild to me. Well, but again, they've only played 13 times. I guess that's true. But they've had some good matchups. They've had some very good matchups. That's entirely the case. I'm excited about this. Case. That's a good way to start the schedule. This is, golly, this is a good schedule. This is going to be a fun season. This is a great day. Uh -huh. I love this day. Yeah. I love to break it down and analyze it. And, and I love that fans... The OT people love to do that as well. Does it feel real now? Feels like the season's it happening? It does. Between the draft and this, it's now we're really doing football. Yeah, it's coming, and it's really going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the honor of playing at Soldier Field. Mm -hmm. And this may be the last time we ever get to play at Soldier Field. Yeah. Because they are going to do some sort of new stadium. And, you know, but the interesting thing is there is an assumption that the Bears have played there for a hundred years, they have not. Really? No, no, they've only been playing there, I think, just over 50 years. Huh. They used to play at Wrigley Field. Nuh-uh. No, they did. Really? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, I thought you were making that up. I'm not making it up. Wow, there's a little Chicago history there's for you. There's a little you. Chicago. Wow. You know, it's kind of like the NFL history. You do, <laughs> yes, you I do like NFL history. <laughs> All right. <laughs> There it is, OT people. The schedule broken down eight ways to Sunday. Your <laughs> eyes are probably crossed right now, and you need to get up and walk around because you're a little woozy. You need to walk to a computer and buy some tickets. Come to these games. Well, and remember, you know, seat geek. Get tickets. or uh, They'll hook you up. Or here we go. You mean get your Titan season tickets. Yeah. They'll still sell you some. Pick up the phone. There you go. 565-4200. I knew you 615 would do it. 615 <laughs> Let's put it on the screen. 615-565-4200. Like a telethon. It is. <laughs> for Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for the OTP. Welcome to the big show.